My name is Shomo. I am Jamboree CEO, and uh, I will introduce my co-panelists today. So we have got an illustrious set of panelists today. I'll start with Harpreet. Harpreet is an assistant director of outreach at Ashoka University. He's a graduate in information technology and has worked in technology transitions for companies like HCL and IBM for more than 10 years. He has been working in the education management sector since 2012 and is responsible for school relations and spreading the word on liberal education for Ashoka University. Welcome, Harpreet. Uh, then we have Anju. Anju is the Associate Director of Admissions and Outreach at Flame University. Uh, she has been an educator for 15 years and has taught in prestigious IB schools like TISB, Inders International School and MIT Vishwanti Gurukul before moving into administrative and operation roles. Welcome, Anju. Uh, Minu Arora. Minu Arora is the Assistant Director Outreach at Kriya. Uh, Minu is the Assistant Director of Outreach at Kriya and is a trained counselor from NCRT and has done a master's in education, psychology, and also a diploma in training and development. Amit. We welcome Minu to the uh, to the discussion today. Uh, Amit Amit Modak is the marketing manager at NMIMS. He is an experienced marketing person with demonstrated history of working in the education management industry. And we have Ramesh Ramesh Mishra is the deputy director admissions and outreach at OP Jindal University. Ramesh is a marketing professional with a career span of over fifteen years in branding and marketing in education management. He has been working with OP Jindal as the Deputy Director Outreach, and he heads the Postgraduate Outreach Plan across India. Previously, he was associated with Time Private Limited. And lastly, we have Kanchi. Kanchi Khanna is a Senior Director Outreach and Admissions at Plaksha University. She is a recipient of IC3's Counseling-Based Approach to Student Recruitment Award in 2019. Kanchi is an Outreach and Communication Specialist and has worked as a communication designer and design teacher for over a decade before taking on education management. She is passionate about promotion of liberal education in India, earlier as director outreach at Ashoka and director communication outreach at Korea University, and now senior director of outreach and admission at Laksha University. So welcome to all of you. And as you can see, we have an illustrious panel today. And so before I, before I hand it over to my panel, I would like to give a little bit of a, I think many of you have heard of Jamboree earlier, but may not have had a chance to know a little more about what Jamboree does. So I will just do a short uh, introduction about Jamboree before I hand it over to the panel. So I hope my screen is visible. Uh, can I see a quick, yes, if I, on the chat, if you can see my screen. Yes, yes. Okay, so thank you. So, uh, so, so Jamboree is an organization which we, we have been helping students to crack these exams like GRE, GMAT, SAT, and IELTS and TOEFL. And we have been doing this for almost 30 years now. And we operate in 39 cities, 22, uh, 39 centers in 22 cities in four countries. But obviously, currently, uh, for the last two years because of the pandemic, Almost everything is online, but we do have 39 physical centers, which we continue to run even today. Uh, so as I said, it's almost 30 years, about 170,000 students plus over these 30 years. And we have about 200 pe people who work as faculty with Jamburi. Uh, this is our geographical look, uh, presence. And uh, so we are in, in, in these cities as you can see, and, uh, and we are also in Singapore, Kathmandu, and, and the UAE. Where our students go, they go all over the world. Uh, uh, we, have, we have representatives from universities in India where they have gone, and we also have students going to all across the world. Uh, what do we do? Uh, we help students crack their city, and uh, so it's, this is a kind of scores which our students get. So as you can see, quite a bit of high scores students get, and that's the, the testimony to the effort which we put behind them. Uh, 
as as against uh, where, where do our students go? I'll start with where they go for the, which is relevant for the group which is here today. So this is last year our students went to some of the universities which are represented here on 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 in this panel as you can see and. Uh, and as, as far as our uh, uh, our our uh, solutions grow, our solutions are, uh, are are pretty similar. If you what the what we do in classroom as well as in the live mode, so uh, an important part of our entire process is also testing. So we have traditionally full length tests, which is which is done, and and we have a rigorous testing process, which helps students to excel in their in their uh, in, in their SAT exam. Uh, we have a very, uh, very, very advanced portal also, which, which kind of, it's a one-stop shop. You don't need to go and do anything other than the portal, all the classes, all the, all the material, all the tests, all the discussions, all the, uh, all the doubt clearing is done on the portal. So that's where our students are most engaged in. And we do also have a very rigorous, uh, uh, testing uh, along with testing, we have a rigorous admissions uh, product where we there are students who are coming as early as class eighth. Um, many students come between class ninth and tenth, uh, where we help them through the entire process of uh, our our uh, admissions, right from profile building, our co-curricular and ex extracurricular. Uh, uh, profile building as well as helping in their university selection application essays, scholarship applications, and all of that. So that's about Jamburi. Uh, I that's I thought I'll just give start with a uh, a brief outlook about Jamburi. I'll now hand it over to the uh, to the to the group and let us let them take it out from there. I will. First, invite Harpreet from Ashoka. So, Harpreet, if you can take over and 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 start with your presentation. Sure, Soumya. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction and the opportunity. Uh, I'm assuming my screen is visible to all. Yeah, it is. Good. So, a quick introduction to Ashoka. I'm assuming the ones present today know a bit about Ashoka. In case you're not, Ashoka University is a liberal arts and sciences university. It has a program in undergrad, which is three plus one year program, which has 200 plus major minor combinations options available with close to 200 plus faculties at Ashoka. It has more than 18 international uh, university partnerships, opportunities for you to go for summer semester abroad opportunities. Technically, you could apply for any university on earth till the time it has a credit transfer policy for a summer or a semester. It also gives opportunities with 12 centers of excellence and various partnerships which are there at campus. Ashoka is Ashoka because of the faculties it holds. We encourage all for that matter who are uh, seeing the presentation today to check our faculty page. You would see that the we have got faculties who were faculties in top universities like Cambridge, Washington State, Harvard, Yale, Stanford, JNU, Institute of sciences and so on, right? I could go on and on and on. But the point why we have really got this faculty from such backgrounds is because the faculty at Ashoka really gets the opportunity to choose what to teach, how to teach and how to evaluate. That's the liberal nature of the university we really bring in. And a similar liberal setup is what a student also gets. A student chooses what to study from whom to study also. But this is really a transition from a rote learning to a liberal education. So to help this transition, we have something which you call as a foundation course. This is a forceful inclusion towards the base, which we call the foundation, which basically has elements of introduction to critical, sorry, literature in the world, quantitative thinking, principles of sciences, environmental sciences, Indian civilization, economics, politics, and society, mind and behavior, great books. So you see there are elements of sciences, commerce, and humanities. So the one thing which we're undoing in the foundation is getting rid of the streams which you would have had in class 11th and class 12th. So everybody comes on that level. 
So thus, any student of any background could then choose whatever they want to pursue as the undergrad at Ashoka. The other intent of the foundation is to create capacity of research because sadly in the Indian education system, we don't allow that to happen. So the base being critical thinking, that's where the foundation is really built on. When we specifically talk about the undergrad program, there are a list of majors, minors, and co-curriculars. You could see that list in front of you. Majors have two columns in front of you, pure majors and interdisciplinary majors. For a degree requirement, you have to do minimum one major. Minor degree requirement is zero. Co-curriculars degree requirement is minimum two. So you create a combination, what you think would work best for you. Again, anybody from any background couldn't come and choose whatever for that matter you want to choose from this list. Few conditions though. You see a star mark in a few majors. Wherever you see a star mark, mathematics is required for you to have in class 11th and class 12th. So in short, if you have maths in class 11th and class 12th, you could do all pure major options available and all interdisciplinary options available at Ashoka. The only exception then would be physics because it will require another option, which is physics in class 11th and class 12th. Students create various opportunities. I'll be more than happy to answer these questions regarding combinations you could probably choose from in the Q&A later. The fourth year is really optional. You decide that by the end of the third year, if you want to do it or not. I highly recommend it to students who are interested in research or PhD for future. All this is really possible because uh, the industry has accepted what we have been delivering in liberal education and been asking for this for a very long time. The new education policy technically is also demanding this from all new schools, existing schools, colleges, and universities across India. You could see the placement record at Ashoka. Students not just get placed in various companies, which I showed earlier, but they also go for international education to universities like Oxford, Cornell, Columbia, Chicago, Science Point, and so on. The admission process obviously is thus different than Indian universities, apparently. So the Indian way of normal selection is merit, quota, and funding. Ashoka really does not go with these three norms. We say our definition of merit is not marks, thus no cutoff. So the application process is really holistic. Four stages to it. So you could really see it on the website too. I'll not spend much time on it, but it's really an understanding of, is it right fit or not? Why are we doing all this? We're technically doing it to ensure we have a diverse student body, not just from different geographical cultural backgrounds, because you could see the batch of 2023, it had 561 students in it, 18 countries they came from, 105 cities, 342 schools, but it's also social economic diversity. 42% of them were in financial aid, 102 of 561 were on full 100% scholarship, 6.3 were on uh, from family backgrounds whose income was less than 2 lakh rupees a year, and so on. Women on campus is a good number at Ashoka. So it's considered to be a diverse, safe residential campus. If you want to experience the Ashoka model while you're in school, there is a certified pre-college summer program available. This is for students from class 9th onwards. Applications for them would be open on 17th of January for the same. If you're interested, these are normally held in mid of May. More details, please visit our website. We are situated at Sonipat uh, Education City. And uh, my contact details are mentioned over here. Thank you all for listening. Somyo, I hope I was in time. Thank you. Thank you, Harpreet. Thank, thanks a lot. I, I think you were right on time. Okay. Uh, can I invite, so we will have a question and answer session at the end. So I'll, I'll invite all the panelists to share their thoughts about the universities. And then we can have, if you have questions for Harpreet or anyone, you can ask it at the end. Uh, can I invite Anju? Uh, Anju, can you kind of uh, take off? Take Hi, off a very, very good evening. Thank you so much, Happy. That was very interesting. And uh, so good thing for the students uh, who are here today is that, uh, you know, in India, you get education, which is absolutely, uh, you know, high in its quality and uh, is accepted worldwide. So uh, uh, at Flame University, I think our excellent programs in maybe business, computer science, or maybe data science, or applied mathematics, psychology, uh, and many, many more. I think they bring students to us from all over the country to the campus in Pune City. And uh, the good thing is that the many of these students are 
essentially drawn by the way we work across disciplines to create a very uh, create a plan, an academic plan that fits their interest and passion both. So a student may come to flame to study business and design, but after taking design courses may discover that, you know, her passion is for hands-on design. And then uh, th that is uh, what we kind of really hold in the core. Flame is unique. It allows students to, uh, I think, a lot of freedom to design their own curriculum to match their own interests. And uh, uh, at this time, I'll quickly take a second to share my screen. Please. Uh, Uh, you can just give me a little thumbs up so that I know the screen is being shared. Yeah, thank you. So uh, yes, Flame is situated in Pune. Uh, it's uh, a university that appreciates a lot of diverse uh, community in terms of not only their talent, but also their interest in different areas and what they are uh, uh, you know, allowed to do in this uh, ecosystem that we have. Uh, it essentially, uh, I think, creates a, a beautiful environment where students are able to develop certain skill sets, which are probably, you know, are in demand today. Today, people don't want to know where you have studied, what you have studied. They want to know what can you do. And the moment you say that, I think the skills that you uh, uh, develop over the time, I think, come to the forefront. And this uh, skill set that you see on your computer screen right now, whether it's critical thinking or problem solving skills, leadership, resilience, and so on and so forth, these are pretty much embedded into the program and the students have opportunity to do all of these, uh, develop all of these. Um, I'll just quickly take a minute to explain what programs we offer and uh, uh, what are the components. Uh, we have five schools, School of Liberal Education, School of Computing and Data Science, School of Business, School of Communication, School of Design, Fine and Performing Arts. So here you're seeing under, under one umbrella, you're attracting students or that you're providing opportunity for students across all disciplines. And you don't have to give up one to follow the other. Uh, we offer more than 350 major minor combinations. Uh, we've started to offer three interdisciplinary major minors uh, from this year. Uh, which is uh, computer science and design, data science and economics, design management. And the fourth year is uh, an optional year. However, the moment you finish your fourth year, I, uh, you get a degree of an honors. Uh, during your three or four years, your first year is essentially focusing on the skill sets that we were talking about uh, and post which you basically decide what your specialization area would be. And then uh, we also have some experiential uh, uh, components uh, within your curriculum which are very, very immersive in nature. And uh, you must look up at something called as Discover India program on Flame uh, YouTube channel, and you'll know what students are capable of, uh, you know, researching and presenting. And based on that, they get placed across, uh, you know, various uh, universities, which are very well recognized around the world. And of course, for the, uh, you know, uh, job placements as well. Um, I'm just going to, because I have five minutes, uh, okay, these are the six degrees that we offer, BA, BSc, BBA, and of course, BBA, uh, BA honors, uh, BSc honors, and BBA in communication. Uh, students can pick up any of these uh, uh, subjects that you see on your right. These are essentially 26 in number and make a combination to study what you want to specialize in. So there's no uh, box that we have that you have to fit inside the box. It's a playing field, absolutely clean and clear, where you can pick your choices and make a curriculum uh, for yourself. Now, uh, we do have global immersion with these universities listed on your screen. So students do have an uh, exchange program uh, in these universities where uh, they go uh, study for a semester and, uh, you know, it's, it's a credit exchange. They bring back the credit uh, uh, and, you know, finish their graduation at Flame. But that gives them a beautiful exposure of, you know, having a look at different perspectives. Uh, there's some notable scholars uh, at Flame University, whether, you know, it's, uh, you know, professors coming from Cambridge or Stanford or Brown University and so on and so forth. So your, I don't, I say the other way around that international exposure is happening right inside your classroom rather than traveling across a continent. Uh, this is the beautiful campus that we have. Uh, uh, so talking about the placements, where are our alum going? Uh, they're literally going places. So, you know, if I have to draw these in six uh, segments like consulting technology, financial services, media, think tanks or consumer industries, you can see whether it's Deloitte, McKenzie, or whether it's Cognizant, or somebody's uh, interest in World Bank, United Nations, and so on and so forth. 
I think uh, these are the people who recognize the talent and students do find a, a place in the world. Uh, of, and especially with uh, of something that they choose, these are certain examples of students where they studied and where they worked, where are they working now? And all of this information is available on the website. Our application rounds, two of them are over now, the early decision and the uh, January cycle, which we call online cycle one. Now the applications, we're inviting application for online cycle two. And it's a simple process. Uh, it's a paid application. You have to pay 2000 rupees for your application. Uh, it's a simple process. First part is your basic information. After you pay the fee, you do put up your, share your documents and write a statement of purpose. And then you have to give a flame entrance aptitude test. But for those who are taking SATs, you don't have to take the flame entrance aptitude, te uh, aptitude test. You can just do the essay and your personal interview. And we normally, uh, you know, declare our decision within two weeks. So I hope I was able to, uh, you know, finish in five minutes. And, and also all the listeners of grade 9, 10, 11, uh, we do offer something called as summer immersion program, which gives you a glimpse uh, of what the rigor of a university life is. Come uh, stay on campus, experience it. Uh, those information will be available on the website very soon. And here I stop sharing. Uh, would love to take more questions later on. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Anju. Thanks. Uh, can I uh, can I request Minu to come in, please? Minu yeah, from Kriya. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Thank you so much. I will just share my screen. Uh, Kriya University is basically situated in Shri City in Andhra Pradesh, uh, which is fifty-five kilometers away from the Chennai airport. Uh, yeah, so you can see the screen. So it takes yeah. around one and a half hours to two hours to reach Kriya campus. Um, it was basically conceptualized by, you know, leaders, visionary leaders from diverse fields because they recognize the gap between the education and the world of work. So students need education plus the skill set to enter the world of work. And this is how uh, we thought of curating the BA uh, and BSc program, you know, to uh, equip the students uh, with skill set as well. So basically, the Kriya uh, ecosystem has two schools, CS, that is a school of interwoven arts and sciences, which gives the undergrad degree, and IFMR, Graduate School of Business, which gives the MBA degree for the past 20 years. IFMR as an institute is quite old, uh, almost 50 years old, which, which, is, which was into basically into research and all. Uh, we also have uh, four research centers uh, where a lot of researchers, not only in the area of science, but also in the area of social studies and interdisciplinary uh, studies takes place. Two months back, we launched a new uh, center for social studies, uh, which is totally dedicated to research. Uh, Kriya uh, is a pioneer in interwoven learning model, which I always say is a step uh, forward to uh, liberal arts and sciences because Whichever major minor combination you do, you know, you uh, will get a flair of how to study every subject from the lens of the other subject. Like, for example, if you're studying biological sciences, how do you study biological sciences from uh, the lens of psychology and, and vice versa? So all our courses at uh, Kriya are very, very writing intensive. We, we believe a lot of uh, in, in research because you have to uh, learn to learn, you know, you have to move from what to learn to how to learn. Ethics is an integral part of every course and uh, data is becoming the language of the 21st century. So the entire, uh, the learning approach uh, to the major and minor combination equips you with those transferable skills. And uh, because we emphasize a lot on transferable skills, when you join Kriya in the first year, first of all, there is no prerequisite in terms of the subjects uh, to join uh, Kriya University. You can, uh, you can uh, uh, join any course, any major minor combination, but the first year when you join, you do these 11 core courses and the skill courses, which gives you, uh, you know, a, a plethora of opportunities to decide that which major minor combination you are going to uh, uh, declare in your second year, because first year you come undecided. So uh, starting from the creative expression to uh, social analysis or mathematical reasoning, design thinking, all these are taken care of uh, in the very first year. And also in the first year, the career service office starts interacting with you. The professors work with you as mentor and help you in deciding about your major minor. And these are the 12 majors, which you can see on the screen. 
uh, you can choose any major minor combination across various disciplines. And as I said, um, there is no prerequisite. So if you don't have maths in your first year, that's perfectly fine with us. You can still go for economics. Along with this major minor combination, you can also do a concentration for which you have to do only three to four courses. Uh, we also have these joint majors. Uh, so when I say joint major, it is different from a double major. To complete a major, you need to do 18 uh, courses. And as a, um, as a part of the joint major, you do nine plus nine courses. So nine courses, for example, in physics and nine courses in chemistry, if you're doing a joint major. So uh, at, at CREA, the admission process, uh, we have already started. The first round is already over and we are going through our second round. Uh, it occurs in two stages uh, and we look at the uh, holistic uh, application. So it starts with stage one, which is the online application uh, where uh, you start with your personal story. Now in this personal story, you know, you talk about any significant event of your life or any moment, any experience, any person which has changed you in some way that is very personal to you. So here you don't need to talk about your achievements or academic awards. You uh, just talk about how you have evolved, uh, you know, as a person. Along with that, we are interested to know what you have done apart from your academics, uh, your co-curricular and extracurricular activities. And as far as academics are concerned, we look at your transcripts from uh, grade nine to grade 12 to see the, uh, the consistency in your academics. And also because we believe in the academic merit uh, and academic potential rather than the academic scores. And uh, here you can uh, also include if you have done some kind of uh, Olympiads or, or theater or dance, you know, you can community service, everything. If you have uh, the SAT scores, you can submit your SAT scores also, although that is not mandatory. And that doesn't uh, give you an edge, but yes, if you have, you can always, um, uh, you know, submit those scores because that will tell us something about your academic potential. Now, once the application is assessed, evaluated in a context and, and in a holistic way, then if you're chosen, you move to stage two. Stage two, we call it as CREA immersive case or, or uh, OKIC because now it happens online. So online CREA immersive case. Here you do a variety of group activity and individual activity. To be very precise, you will be given a case uh, to reflect on so you will work with the entire group, you will critically analyze the case from various perspectives and you will do a group presentation. Uh, you will also get a chance to interact with the uh, professors. So no interviews conducted, but it is a kind of conversation which happens uh, again with the objective of knowing you better. That, you know, what are your dreams? What is your vision? Uh, what you uh, think about the, uh, uh, you know, about your life? How, how can you contribute to Kriya? How Kriya can uh, help you in realizing your dreams. So, uh, uh, and you are free to ask as many questions as you want to the professors. Then you also write a reflective essay on, on this day, which, which is on the spot uh, essay. And, and then on any common day, um, a short quantitative and logical reasoning test uh, happens. And once you clear this, uh, then you are uh, given the offer. And uh, one more thing I would like to uh, add here, which I forgot to mention, we also look for the predicted scores. So you can always give uh, self-predicted scores um, and, and we are perfectly fine with that. And your admission process, if you once you get the admission offer, that is the confirmed admission offer. So you can get the admission offer before your board results are also announced. So because once you clear it, then we just need your class 12th passing certificate. You know, uh, it, it is not conditional. It is confirmed offer. Uh, I think I can stop here and, and I can answer uh, other things during the Q&A session. Uh, thank, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Minu. Uh, so uh, I, what I request, I can see quite a few questions coming up on the chat box. Uh, so what I request all the students is that please hold on to your questions and please uh, till the Q&A session. Otherwise, you may miss out on the answers if you have typed in earlier. Uh, so please hold out your questions and we will answer each and every one of your questions. But don't type it right now. Hold on till the Q&A session so that they are properly attended to. Okay. Th thanks. And uh, let me move to the next speaker. It is Amit from NMIMS. Amit, if you can start. Yeah. Uh, 
Good evening to you all. I'll just. Uh, is my screen is visible? It is Amit. Yeah. Okay. So I'll just uh, go through a small presentation about NMIMS. Okay. So this is all about NMIMS. We have 40 year of legacy and we have 750 faculty members, eight, campus, uh, eight campuses across India, 17,000 students and 17 specialized schools. So we have a UG and PG program both in the 17 specialized school. Now these are the milestones where uh, NMIMS has started. We had started at 1981 and with the, the university affiliated with University of Mumbai. In 2003, we got a deemed to be university status by government of India. In 2015, we had received the best innovative university award by DNA Innovative. And in 2017-18, we have got a NAC accreditation with 3.59 CGPA. So this is all about the journey milestone of NMIMS. Uh, these are the campuses, eight campuses located all over India. That is our flexible campus is Mumbai campus. Then in Maharashtra, we have two campuses, Sirpur, Dhule. In uh, Central India, we have Indore campus. In uh, Mumbai, we have another campus, which is in Navi Mumbai. And in South, we have Bangalore and Hyderabad. In North, uh, we have started with a campus in Chandigarh. So that was started in the year 2021, last year itself only. So these are the campuses across uh, all over India for NMIMS. Now, these are the accreditations, what we generally have for uh, engineering as well as uh, for management courses. MBA is the accreditation for management and uh, for ABET is the accreditation for the uh, engineering program. Now, these are the international partnerships, what NMIMS has. So we had tied up with Purdue University, Stephen University, Berkeley University of California, Virginia Tech University. So we have multiple program in engineering. So where we are tied up with Virginia Tech University and in management, we are tied up with Purdue University. So these are our international partners. Now, these are the, some of the undergraduate programs, uh, what we have it in NMIMS. Uh, we have liberal arts, that is BA honors in liberal arts branding and advertising uh, bba branding and advertising this course is being initiated by uh, pralab tata who is the ad guru now we have law program in law we have three program bba llb honors ba and llb honors blb honors and we have one unique program which is uh, performing arts so this is basically specialization into indian music and western music very few universities offer uh, this kind of performing arts program so in Indian music and Western music. So we have into uh, hospitality also, that is into hospitality operation management, operations and management. Then we have into architecture, which is B architecture and MR for post graduation. And uh, we have very unique course that is into international uh, interior environment and design course, which is a BA honors, which comes under architecture. And uh, we have a design course, which is called BDAS, that is basically specialized into humanizing technology. Now, these are the, some of the undergraduate program. Uh, we have BTEC integrated program, which is a six year program, which you can do it after the class 10th itself only. And uh, we have specialization into data science, AI, cyber security, mechanical and automation, AI, artificial intelligence, and machine learning, then computers, mechatronics, civil, ENTC. So these are the specializations what we offer in engineering. In technology management, we have MBA tech, where you'll be uh, combining BTEC with MBA tech program. So it's a five year dual degree integrated program. In mathematics, we have a BSc mathematics in honors. In science, we have applied statistics, data science, applied psychology, integrated biomedical science. In pharma, we have B pharma, and we have one unique program, integrated program, which is called B pharma plus MBA tech program. And uh, in Sirpur campus, we have one uh, course called BSc in agriculture honors. So this, this is also one of the unique program. In commerce, uh, it is a BBA, BSc Finance, become honors. In economics, we have BSc Economics. And then we have a family business, which is an integrated BBA plus MBA in family business management and entrepreneurship. It is a very uh, unique program uh, for uh, business entrepreneurs and all that if they want to pursue their degree in management. Now, these are the, some of the entrance exam which NMMS conduct for his uh, undergraduate exam. NMMS NPAT is basically for the management uh, courses. Uh, undergraduate management courses just like BA, B BCom, BSc Finance and all that. CET is all for the BTEC program, uh, entrance exam for the BTEC. Then we have NMMS LAT that is basically for law, uh, for law aptitude test. And then we have NMMS DAT that is basically for the B design course that is a design aptitude test. So these are the four uh, entrance exam which NMMS conducts 
for the uh, admission to the all the undergraduate program. Now, these are the uh, pattern of the questions, how NMM, SANPAT, CET is there. So it's basically an aptitude test where you have an English, uh, English language will be there. You will have quantitative aptitude will be there. There will be reasoning and all that. So this will be the uh, exam pattern for the NPAT and CET again, it will be based on physics, chemistry, uh, PCM, biology, logical intelligence and language proficiency. Now this is for the LAT. LAT again, we have English language, current affairs, legal, uh, legal reasoning, logical reasoning, quantity techniques and all that. And in that we have a design aptitude test, or the, which is an online studio test, personal interview and portfolio review. Now this is the important slide uh, for uh, the SAT student. So these are the following programs where we accept the SAT score. Okay, that is a BTEC, MBA Tech, BBA Become Honors, BSc Finance, BSc Economics, BA Honors Liberal Arts, and BSc Mathematics. So these are the programs where we accept the SAT score. And uh, 1200 score is the minimum score which we accept. And uh, 5 to 10 percent seats are allocated through SAT. Now these are the admission steps which you need to follow. First, you need to go, you have to register over there. You have to fill up the application. You will get the, your login credentials. Then you have to complete these steps, whatever the four to five steps are there, downloading the application form and everything. Then you have to choose the date for the test and the test center. Then you have to appear for the test. And once you are done with your test, then you have to wait for the merit list and call letter from NMIMS. And uh, if you get selected, then you have to fill up an e-admission form and appear for the interview, upload the document, post verification, the payment notice will be mailed and you have to pay the fees and you have to confirm the admission. So these are the admission steps which you need to follow up uh, for NMIMS admission. And uh, any of the students who want to get in touch with you, these are toll free number and you can visit our main website www.nmms.edu and you can mail your query into admission uh, inquiry at nmms.edu. So these are the ways where you can reach to NMMS admission team. Now, this, this was a small presentation from my side. Now, if you have any kind of query, uh, if you have any kind of questions and all that, then we'll uh, feel free to uh, ask your query in the Q&A session. So that's about from my side. Thank you. Thank you, Amit. Thank yeah. you. Uh, can, I, can I now request Ramesh to come in from Upajindal? Yeah, thank you, Somyo. I will just quickly share my presentation. Yeah. I hope my screen is visible. It is, Ramesh. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, hi, I'm Ramesh Mishra. I'm representing OP Jindal uh, Global University, located in uh, Sonipur. It's a fully residential campus uh, in North India. Just to give you a glimpse of uh, uh, JGU, currently uh, we have 12 schools offering 52 programs out of which 35 are undergraduate level and 16 at PG level and then there we have our doctorate programs. We are a complete non-STEM university where we offer programs in the field of law, management, liberal arts, humanities or social sciences. A uh, lot of uh, credibility and rankings we do have uh, you know, to our credit. Uh, recently, we have received the institution of eminence by the Ministry of Education, um, uh, Government of India. Then uh, we are ranked as number one university in, in uh, India by QS World Rankings. And then we have number one law school also to be offered. That is the first uh, school what we started in 2009 itself. <clears throat> then at, at uh, uh, JGU, we have more than 8,000 plus students. We have a wonderful gender ratio of more than you know, uh, 49, 50 percent, almost equal uh, ratios what we are having. Uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, faculty members who are uh, coming from, you know, uh, international international levels. We have almost 10 percent to 11 percent faculties who are international uh, for foreign nationals who are at the campus and teaching the courses. Uh, sorry, this is this was the what I was talking about. Out of almost thousand plus faculty, thousand faculties, almost hundred faculties are uh, international faculties. So you get a wonderful exposure in terms of international uh, level. We have the 35 uh, programs to be offered at UG level. There is a BBA, BBA, LLB, which is a five years of independent program. We have BA, we are starting this year, uh, BA Legal Studies, BA Honors in Gender Studies, and BA uh, Criminology and Criminal Justice, and BA Honors Human Rights. Under business, we, uh, we have a BBA programs, and we have an integrated uh, BBA plus MBA programs also. We have a BBA Family Business School programs to be offered at uh, 
uh, international affairs. We do have uh, uh, global affairs, so political science, then diplomacy and foreign policies. And the public policy, we have a BA economics and public policy. Liberal arts, again, it, it's one of the refined, a uh, lot of this concept of liberal arts has already been covered by my other colleagues. So we, yes, we do offer that program too. On the journalism, we have uh, journalism and media studies and film and uh, new media. Uh, to talk about architecture, yes, we do have a uh, uh, Bachelor of Architecture, then we have a uh, Bachelor of Design, then in Banking Finance, we have a uh, BCom Honors, then we have a uh, um, uh, collaboration with uh, National Stock Exchange, where we're offering BCom Honors in Capital Markets. Here we have one more collaboration with uh, Deakin University of Australia, which is a twinning program, what we say. It, it's a triple degree program, where a student get an opportunity uh, to, uh, to you know, uh, earn three degrees. One will be BCom from Jindal University, and then there will be a BS Bachelor of uh, uh, Business Studies from Deakin University with an optional of doing MBA from Deakin University. It is uh, two plus one plus one point five years. That's a wonderful program. What we have come up very uh, very uniquely in India. We have uh, environment under environment. We have environmental studies and sustainable development. Um, we have psychology, English, Spanish, and uh, public health. Uh, all these programs are regular programs. What we are offering, we have 560 plus more than uh, you know courses which are compulsory with five elective electives and the cross electives. That's truly make us uh, interdisciplinary in nature. Where as a student from architecture, if he wish to pursue any subjects in public policy, yes, he is allowed to take up that kind of courses. Uh, we have a lot of collaborations abroad as well as well as in India also with various uh, uh, you know industries and other things. So we have in both ways, uh, short-term study abroad, semester exchanges or dual degree program, which I've already covered in previously, they can decide uh, and in the course of a time when they want to go for a, uh, you know, um, uh, the semester exchange program or dual degree program, only for global become they will have to decide at the time of admissions. Uh, this is uh, some of the universities with whom we are having collaborations. We have a wonderful uh, life. I'm sure like I can invite all of you, if you can visit Sonipat, uh, uh, you know, um, Jindal campus, you will be delighted to see uh, the entire environment. A um, lot of amenities are there in that includes a gym or say wonderful cricket ground or football ground, uh, 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 almost you know, uh, uh, Olympic size swimming pool, uh, sports facilities, all of them are available in the campus itself. We have an office of career services, which deals with not only with the final placements, but also for the internships, as well as on career advisors of higher education. <clears throat> These are all our recruiters. Um, the application process has already started, and we do accept. We do conduct our own entrance exam called JSAT. We do accept a score of a SAT as well as ACT, and uh, uh, we have other programs uh, like uh, for, for for law. We do accept LSAT as well as uh, flat entrance exam for various other programs. So you'll have to check it out program wise which scores are going to be applicable for that. Yeah. So that's all from my end. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks, Ramesh. Thanks. Thanks for your presentation. Can I finally invite Kanchi, please? Can you come in, please, Kanchi from Plaksha? Yes, of course. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. So I'm going to just uh, share my screen and uh, tell me if the uh, PPT is visible. Can you see the PPT? Uh, yeah, I can see it. So uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Kanchi, and I'm the Director for Admissions and Outreach at Plaksha University. Uh, it's great to be here today and great to talk to an amazing group of students. Uh, I would like to introduce Plaksha to you. Plaksha is a slightly newer university, newer than the others over here. Uh, and we are, um, a, uh, we are, we have a very unique, uh, not a very unique, but we have a unique uh, uh, governance structure, uh, very similar to Ashoka, Kriya and others. We are collective philanthropy, which means we have uh, our founders come from all over the world and have come together to set up a university here in India, which will really be an international university. So if you look at, look at this screen of mine, you'll see that these founders come from across the world, from different countries, different continents, uh, and they are contributing to setting up Laksha and also uh, you know, adding to the knowledge here. We are um, uh, partnered with some universities. We partnered with some universities and organizations for research, for student exchange, for curriculum development, even before we started out. And some of those are university-wide partnerships are with Berkeley, with Purdue, our research partnerships are with Stanford uh, Research Center, with IIT, Kanpur, with PGI, and with many more. Uh, so Plaksha is not just 
uh, you know, a university to study your BTEC courses in, but it's also a research university. It's also offering masters and PhD programs. But I'm here to talk only about the BTEC programs. Uh, we offer four BTEC programs. Uh, each one of these is uh, in the field of emerging technologies. So these, these four majors that we are offering are really the future of tomorrow. The, they are the ones that will be throwing up the maximum number of jobs uh, in the coming decades. So the first one, uh, very interdisciplinary, computer science and artificial intelligence. Uh, traditionally, artificial intelligence used to be just uh, you know, one course in the whole CS curriculum. But this, um, but as we've seen that artificial intelligence is becoming such a part of our life, uh, it is now uh, a major with us. Uh, the other, the second degree is robotics and cyber physical systems. It sounds a little too fancy, but cyber physical systems, if you understand, is simply uh, describing any system today, whether it's your phone in your hand, whether it's your it's the lift that you are riding up in, the car that you are driving. Everything is a physical machine, but it is also connected to the internet. So it's important for our students who are doing BTEC now to understand what are robots and what are these cyber physical systems. So it's really the traditional mechanical, electrical, electronic degree put together. Similarly, we have one for biological systems engineering. And the last one is data science, business and economics. And the last degree really cuts across humanities, social sciences, and sciences. And till now, we don't uh, want students, we, we, uh, while uh, for the first three degrees, we want you to come in with physics and maths, the data science degree can also be taken up by students from humanities and commerce who have mathematics and are interested in data science. So uh, when the students come in, they don't have to choose the majors, they can choose them in the second year, they spend four years. These are four year BTEC degrees. Uh, and in the first year, the first one and a half years is common. After that, they deep dive into whatever major you choose and you choose it, we don't allocate it to you. Uh, and you also uh, pass out with a, with a capstone project. Our faculty is very, very amazing. I'm not going to go through the list because it's a very long list, but I'm just going to point out that there are very senior faculty members from across the world. There are also young professors who have just now finished their PhDs like Dheeraj from Cambridge. Uh, and you can look at the universities and the organizations from where they've come out. It's a very impressive list. So these 16 people are uh, full-time faculty on campus and we are adding more now that students will be our first batches in place. And now that they'll be choosing their majors, we'll be adding a lot more faculty to, to, our, uh, to our cohort. Uh, very quickly, I'm coming to the admissions. Uh, we have holistic admissions. We will look at your complete profile before we make you an offer. Uh, you should be in class 12 or should have completed class 12 from a recognized national or international curriculum. It could be the state boards. It could be CBSC, ICSE national boards. It could be international boards. Wherever you are from, we are open to it as long as it's considered equivalent. You need to have math and physics, like I said, for some of the degrees and only mathematics for one of the degrees. You will, if you apply with predicted grades, you're still in class 12th, you get a conditional offer. But if you give us one of these scores, which are listed on the screen, you may even get a firm offer from us, right? So it always is, works in your favor to give us maybe a SAT ACT or a JE uh, or any of these other test scores. It's a form, it's a fairly long form. Uh, we want to know everything about you. So tell us, give us your transcripts from nine to 12. Uh, write a couple of essays for us. Uh, you could send in videos. You could also write them down. Co-curriculars, extracurriculars. And if we like your profile, we're going to pick it up, call you for the second round of admissions where we give you a case study to solve. Um, it's a, it's, you just have to read it, spend time. You can use the Google. You can think about it and give us a written document of how you think you can solve that problem. It's generally a real world uh, problem. Uh, and after that, we have an interview. That's all. You don't have to take any more Plaksha tests. That's it from me. So I mean, I've kept it very short, uh, but if there are questions, I'll be happy to take them. Thanks so much. Thanks, Kanchi. That's really nice. So, uh, so what now, uh, students, we are now open to questions. Uh, I know some of you had typed in questions earlier. But uh, uh, to help us, all of us, to answer your questions, 
if you can just quickly put in your questions and in that in your in the chat and if you can just uh, type the name of the university or the person to whom you are addressing it it will make our lives easier Uh, I think I see uh, there's a question yeah. just come. Yeah. Only the eligibility for criteria is just for BTEC, right? Yes, that's just for BTEC. Uh, also, there's a question about is Plaksha only for science students? I think that's so also. Like I mentioned, there are three degrees. It is a technology university, which means that most, most courses are towards technology, but data science, business, and economics is one BTEC degree, which you can do even if you are from humanities and commerce. The prerequisite is only mathematics. Okay. Um, <clears throat> do you want me to take the yeah, couple? Anju, Anju, you can take the one. On yeah, so uh, this is, of course, the anonymous. So which monthly admissions at Frame University has started? We started way back in uh, end of October. That's uh, pretty much where, uh, you know, we open our applications for the early decision. And then this carries on till uh, the last week of May. And uh, this year, again, we might be, I mean, the last date is declared closer to time. Uh, right now, we're in a cycle three, essentially. Uh, early decision is over. Uh, online one is over. Now we have online cycle two, which is uh, open. And 14th Feb is the last day to fill in uh, the application. Uh, Naman, the SAT scope of uh, I think anybody who has about... <clears throat> 1200 1250 is a good candidate to uh, uh, you know expect uh, uh, an offer and uh, again this is very relevant i don't want you to just catch me for it because it really depends on the pool of applications that we get okay okay uh, there's one question from nmms uh, so yeah. the student yeah, asking that uh, what is the cutoff for the uh, for the sat score so 1200 is the enough score if you are applying through SAT, but uh, only five to ten percent of admission are accepted through SAT score. Okay, the rest of the things are accepted through either through CET and PAT or NLAT and all that. And there was one more question for the BARC admission. For BARC admission, we accept NATA score. Okay. Yeah, there is one question for OP Jindal. So can I address? Yeah, please, Ramesh, go ahead. So it is about the SAT score required. Uh, yes, uh, we are asking around 1100 kind of a score for uh, majority of our programs. You can apply for that one. And in case if you have a SAT score, so you, of course you can then skip appearing for JSAT entrance exam. Uh, that is another entrance exam through which you can apply for. And as far as architecture is concerned, yes, uh, we do accept scores uh, at architecture for uh, OP Jindal is through NATA or say JWE paper two. But physics, chemistry, mathematics becomes compulsory. That was another your question, like uh, whether you have uh, taken chemistry or not. So PCM becomes mandatory over there. Yeah. Harpreet, I think there's a question on Ashoka aptitude test. Uh, do you want to take that? Oh, uh, what's the question, Samya? It says it says from Anya. It says Ashoka aptitude test after SAT score submission. So I think the question is, do do they need to do take both? Right. So SAT is optional. And uh, you may, may not choose to give the SAT. Ashoka aptitude assessment is mandatory. Irrespective of whatever your SAT score or given or not given, you would have to give the Ashoka aptitude assessment. Okay, I, I will take another question, which is the best time to take an, a given asset. I, I'll take that question. So the best time is whenever, so most of students end up taking the SAT, the first attempt on the SAT when they're in class 11th, okay? So as you know, SAT happens five times a year. So you can choose which time you, which which one which you want to take, and uh, and and there are many students who are taking the second attempt at the end of class eleventh or early class twelfth. So that's that's where you should uh, plan the SAT. But you should plan it well before the application cycle starts, so that you you have the relevant scores. Uh, there was one question on um, which subjects to take up if one wants to pursue human resource management. So uh, any, any other universities can also pitch in. What I personally feel, uh, it's your personal choice, but if you talk about the technicalities, so I think uh, like at Kriya, we have psychology as a major and you can always take business studies as a minor. 
So this combination will help you in doing HRM, human resource management, more successfully. So uh, please, uh, Anju, you can pitch in if you want to. Please. Absolutely. I think that's, some, that's a brilliant combination and, uh, uh, you know, which, which will help you with your HR, actually. So not, not otherwise as well, but even with your HR, absolutely. How can we prepare for SAT exam? That's for you. Yeah. Um, you see the question. So the, the best way to prepare for SAT exam is to first be aware of what are the various sections of SAT and then prepare for them. And in case you are wanting to know more, if you can drop in your uh, your number on the chat, and we'll get somebody from Jambo to talk to you. And there is one question for Priya that what is the minimum SAT score? So there is no cutoff for SAT score uh, because we look at the holistic uh, admission process. So uh, whatever score you have got and you want to mention it in your application, please do mention. And uh, there was one more question on the uh, cutoff for class 12. Uh, we don't have any minimum uh, cutoff for class 12th uh, percentage and uh, other universities, please, uh, you can uh, say if you have some cutoffs. Um, I'd like to add to this. So uh, I'd like to, uh, everybody to please understand when we say we don't have cutoffs, right? Your question should be, why don't we have cutoffs, right? So please understand this, that the Indian education system has only evaluated you on memory and that's the exam you have given. And our definition is not your memory-based capacity. I'll give you a small example. If you want to be a research scholar, you have to be academically rigorous, but you also have to be creative. You got to be thinking outside the box. You got to be person comfortable working with teams. You know, you got to be person who's comfortable dealing with failure and coming back, have the power of resilience. Now, if you start seeing all these things which are required, which are technically taking you to a sciences stream, they are not reflected in your academics. So what we are saying is, bring your application on and let us start seeing if you're a right fit. That's the word we are trying to look for. So when you're asking us conversations, please tell me a cutoff of this. Is this score required or not? There is enough in our application for you to present yourself, right? Just see it from perspective that we are a liberal arts and sciences university. Are you a liberal student to align your journey with us and take that conversation further, right? So there is not going to be a set answer. SAT score is how much, how much marks in my class 11th and 12th should I go forward or not? How many or what co-curriculars would Ashoka want to see? Uh, there is no answer to that. Just bring whatever you have as an application. Let us assess. We are assessing you not for a good or a bad candidate. We're only assessing you, your right fitment or not. So there's a question on SAT fees. It is about $105 in, uh, which is, you have to, you have to convert that in Indian currency around seven and a half thousand to 8,000 rupees, depending on what the exchange rates are at what they're paying. So that's for an Indian student. Okay. Uh, uh, I think Kanchi, there's a question for our first batch of uh, data package expectation. I don't know if you can answer that, but uh, I leave it to you. Laksha has uh, just got its first batch uh, in. Uh, they will be graduating after three years, three and a half years. Uh, while I won't be able to tell you what is the expected package there, what I'll be able to tell you is that we have a postgraduate one-year program where the average package this year was 19 lakhs per annum. Uh, we have a career development cell. We have a placement cell. Uh, we will be working very hard to get the same organizations who come for our postgraduates to come for our undergraduates as well. And Plaksha has really been born out of corporate. So we have uh, support from over 80 plus corporate houses already to provide uh, internships, projects, and also placements. Uh, so for MBA Tech, uh, the admission process has already started. So whatever the latest SAT score is there, you can submit that score, and uh, that will be accepted for MBA Tech admissions. Uh, Amit, there is another question about NMMS, about BCA degree. 
So as of now, we are not providing BCA degree. We don't have BCA degree. BCA course we don't have. Okay, there's a question. Psychology plus arts is this combination available at Ashoka or Flim? So, yes, I yes. Preet Anju. Yeah. So, so uh, psychology is one of our very popular subjects, and you have twenty-one possible minors to take uh, from, uh, ranging right from you know your finance and your journalism, public policy, international relations, or be it uh, computer science for that matter. So there are twenty-one uh, minor options available with psychology. From an Ashoka perspective, uh, there is a list of majors. Psychology is a part of that. And uh, in terms of uh, arts is concerned, there is fine arts. Uh, I'm assuming that is what you intend. That is available as one of the minors at Ashoka. Again, you could come and explore yourself. Uh, the initial one and a half years is what we allow you to experiment. So uh, I would want you to be curious enough to try and figure out what in psychology and what in arts you're interested in. Come to our faculty page, see what researches these guys been a part of, and then say whether Ashoka would be a right fitment for you or not. The reason I say that is because if you go to our website, you'll not find a curriculum of psychology or fine arts like that, because over here our faculties decide what to teach, how to teach, and how to evaluate. So they're constantly evolving. So a faculty, the research and their background should be a good indicator for you to decide if that will work for you at Ashoka or not. There's a question on fee structure for BTEC in Plaksha. Uh, Kanchi, you want to take that? Yeah, so we are, uh, like I always say, that our uh, fee is not a number, but it's a range because we have financial aid, uh, a very generous financial aid program, which means that, you know, you pay only as much as you can pay. So we look at the family income and we see how much, you know, your family can afford. The highest that anyone pays is about 6.95 lakhs a year. Uh, but very few students at uh, Plaksha pay that. We have both financial aid as well as merit scholarship. So 80% of our students are on some form of scholarship. Just about 20% are paying that much. Harpreet, there is a similar uh, question for Ashoka also. Uh, evaluation of holistic or SAT based is from Sukeshi. Uh, what's the evaluation for scholarship itself? I, I, I think they mean financial aid also. Okay. So Ashoka's evaluation for financial aid is based on need. So the technical term which we use is it's a need blind admission process and a need based financial aid. This conversation really happens after you have got a seat. And the reason for that is because the money in your pocket should not decide or influence us to give you a seat or not to, right? So once you have a seat, then we ask you, do you want to apply for financial aid? If you choose yes, the form online form further expands and it asks you details like family income, expenses, assets, liabilities, lifestyle, and a small essay of why you need financial aid. A finance team would evaluate it. A CA would audit it. If required, we'll interview your parents. And based on that, financial aid is given to you. Now, when I say financial aid is given to you, it is only on the basis of a capacity to pay, not your intent to pay. Right. So if you cannot afford it, Ashoka would take care of it. There is no contract. There is no, it's not a loan. You don't really have to pay it back. Right. So that's the financial aid at Ashoka. Thanks. So there's a question from Mr. Anish, which says, My son is NRI who is OCI. Uh, what is the criteria for admission in general? Not specific to any university. So uh, request any one of you if you want to take that on. Um, so the admission process, I think, uh, uh, you know, I can, because we've been co-presenting so many places, pretty much similar for uh, uh, the universities, uh, all of us here. Um, there is, while all of us probably offer some form of scholarship, the admission process is very simple. Uh, uh, you know, at Flame University, if you're a SAT taker, you don't have, to, you have a choice to do your Flame entrance aptitude test, or you can just do your uh, uh, SAT and then, uh, for those students, they'll write essay for us, a personal essay and uh, sorry, on spot essay and uh, there'll be a personal interview. So that's the process of uh, uh, the admissions. 
And uh, it's same for everyone, whether you are in Mumbai or Delhi or uh, out of the country and you're, you're an NRI or an Indian uh, national, uh, it's the same for everyone. And the fee is also same for everyone at Frame University. And uh, students who are on campus, uh, uh, who are uh, given the offer, 30% of the students are on merit scholarship. And we also have financial aid. And of course, that conversation uh, uh, at Flame also happens only once you've been shortlisted, then you can apply for financial aid. Thanks, Sanju. Uh, Ramesh, and, and sorry for, for the SAT takers, I, we also have a scholarship, the college board scholarship. So if you have a high SAT scores, you can still apply for scholarship. And I think that's true for almost all the universities yeah. here. Yeah. We are all subscribers of college board. You do have that uh, option to get a scholarship from us. And all of us here, almost all of us have holistic admission. So your entire profile matters and not just a cutoff. And, and all, almost all of us also offer financial aid, I think. So you shouldn't be worrying about fees. You should be worrying about putting your best foot forward, uh, having a good profile to present to us. Make sure that whatever you are telling us is in line with what you're applying for. So if you're applying to Plaksha for a BTEC degree, your co-curriculars should be more aligned to that. If you're applying to Ashoka Flame or any of the other degrees, uh, make sure that your co-curriculars, extracurriculars really reflect your interests there. And if I may add, if I may add to that, take all the help which you need, but it still has to be your application, right? There is enough in our application process to know if it is not you, right? Plagiarism is going to be a big issue. Uh, many apparently students who apply to Indian universities, they don't have to deal with this issue, but I could speak for a few universities who are present over here. If you have copied your application from somewhere, even the internet, even a certain percentage of it, it will not even go through in human eye. It will automatically would get rejected, right? So please ensure it's an application which is you. Until the time it is you, you have a greater chance of getting through uh, than somebody else's application. So when you ask this question as, what should I write in an application? Technically, you're not being yourself. You're asking a version which is somebody else's. Please avoid such conversations. Okay, I have got a, uh, got a question which I think is relevant for many of the universities here. It says from Poonam Junjunwala, it says, can you please again give a little clarity on liberal education? Do all kids study the same course in the first year, irrespective of the stream they uh, can you just, uh, any, I, I would request any one of you uh, to take that on, please. Uh, maybe a, a little more clarity on the concept of liberal education. So, uh, so I'm sorry. Yes, sir, please, please go ahead. Uh, okay, so guys, please understand the word liberal first. Liberal as a word means open mind, right? Stick to that. Now put it to education. So the education which you're going to go in a liberal education is supposed to liberate you, open your minds up. So one concept which you should understand in a liberal setup is we're not going to tell you to like study in a certain manner, in a certain fitment, in a certain way. You're going to bring yourself in, in a class where you'll be exploring with the class together. So when we say uh, we're going to transition you from a rote learner to a liberal education, there is a certain structure which is fixed. At Ashoka, we call it the foundation. It's a forceful inclusion because if you don't do that forceful inclusion, you would have a tendency of choosing something on your own. But the real world does not work like that. Pure reason is there is nothing as pure sciences, pure commerce or pure humanities. And I could give you zillions examples of that. So the foundation is intended to have that forceful inclusion. But that's the only formal structure we have to it. Beyond that, it's your exploration completely. So there was one question which was asked in, in the Q&A that can I do a combination of A, B, C, D, E, F, and G? Answer is yes. The point is how much time do you have and how much could you absorb in that time? It is your capacity which decides your path of education in a university which is liberal, not we telling you of how much to study in what time. So it's a credit-based education. So the time you complete a certain number of credits required for your major to be completed, technically your degree is completed, right? So if you're going to add more things, and if it's that's going to take longer, then you stay longer in the university and complete all those admins which you want for yourself. 
right? So uh, it's a different structure than what you normally know as a traditional university, but you could relate this a lot to many international universities, especially the top 50 on earth. Okay, Milu, you are adding something to that. You wanted to add to what Harpreet said. No, I, I think you were saying, has, uh, Harpreet has summarized it beautifully. So, you, uh, you know, the, like the student was asking very specifically that you do, uh, everybody does the first year courses. Yes, everybody uh, does the first year courses in, in all the liberal education universities because that gives you the transferable skills. So it's not that if you're a science student or a math student only then you will do mathematical reasoning and remember it is a mathematical reasoning you know in most of the universities it is not maths you're not going to study 3d and vectors and trigonometry it is just to think in that particular style and as far as future is concerned when we are talking about uh, the changing landscape and and uh, we are talking about that you need to change careers uh, five to six times in, in in that in your career journey then these uh, skill set gives you those broad-based transferable skills and you can, when you study your major, you always get the in-depth knowledge. And, and they also train you how to apply these transferable skills into various disciplines. So suppose if it is creative expression, like, like at Korea, everybody studies creative expression in the first year. So whether you go to the physics field, psychology field, literature, you study how to relate creative expression to all these career domains, you know, because future is all about innovative. So that prepares you for those uh, uncertain careers, you know, which you don't know. So, so your anxiety level can come down with that. Thanks, Mini. Thanks. I, I think there's uh, Anish is following up on his question. International students cost structure differential between Indian and international students. Uh, is there some any one of you if you want to take that on? Not at flame. It may be different for others. Not at flame. Not at Laksha also, Indian international students pay the same fee. Same uh, not, yeah. not at Ashoka too, uh, irrespective of an Indian or international, the fees would remain the same. The only reason we'll consider you international is if that passport is not Indian. That's it. So the rest, you could be a green card, uh, citizen, whatever combination you might call complex it. Just have this golden rule. The country's passport you hold, if that is Indian, you're an Indian student applying. If that is not an Indian passport, then you're applying as an international student. I when the fee is the same for uh, OPG also, same. Okay, thank you. Same thank for you. NMMS also. Th thank you, thank you. Uh, I think there is a question which somebody is asking quite a few times. It's about clinical psychology for undergraduate. I don't know if anyone in the university is offering clinical psychology at undergraduate level, but I would leave it to all of you. Uh, can, can, I, can I take this? Yeah, please. please I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a psychologist, basically. Yeah, so yeah. there is no undergrad program in yeah. clinical psychology. You know, you always do a generalized psychology at your undergrad level, and then you specialize in at your master's level. Mm -hmm. Some universities give a, a kind of specialization in the third year. Like there are some special papers, so you can choose uh, out of organizational behavior or clinical psychology. Uh, that you can choose, but specialization in clinical psychology occurs at the master's level. In fact, in central universities, not even at master's level, but at the MPhil level. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Yeah, right, definitely. And also, people who are passionate about psychology or looking at careers, please understand uh, undergraduate degree is not never enough. You don't get, you know, those jobs uh, just or become an expert just by your uh, undergrad degree. You have to post grad and do your specialization. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, there's a question about perfect age for ACT. Uh, there's no perfect age for that. Most students take up at class 11th. So whatever age you might be in. So that's the, that's the, but there are students who are taking in 10th, there are students taking in. I think the question should be more in the grounds of how long is the SAT score valid, yeah. right? Because if you're going to use it in a university, you should be giving within a time frame when it is still going to be valid for you. Okay. Uh, for whatever reason, I can't. Okay. I there think... is one question for me. Uh, like yeah, yeah. Please go ahead. Know, Ramesh, please go ahead. We doesn't have a computer science, ma'am. Uh, we are, I am assuming computer science, you mean to say the BTEC programs. So you know, we are a non STEM. So we do not have engineering, medical. Other than that, we have almost all kind of specializations. Um, 
I'll take this question from Pooja. She's saying, uh, how many subjects do we study in the first year? So, uh, uh, like, uh, you know, the liberal education universities here, you will study maybe, uh, you know, at Flame, you study 10 courses from five different disciplines uh, alongside your core components, which are essentially to develop your transferable uh, skills, such as you know, a course in uh, critical thinking or uh, academic writing, mental model, financial literacy. So we have some eight courses uh, uh, to, uh, you know, develop those skills, which will help you do better uh, in your second and third year. I mean, you'll actually apply and uh, benefit from them. Apart from that, you do 10 more courses. Uh, so that makes 18 courses that you do. And that is what the real exploration is before you decide uh, what you really want to uh, pursue as your specialization area. And uh, that's what you declare in the beginning of the second year at Flame University. Uh, yeah. So may if I could answer it with a twist. Yeah, yeah, please. So please many, ahead. many students ask us, uh, uh, how many classes would I be attending, right? Uh, how rigorous would be my journey at a university? So if you really ask a student at Ashoka, the number of classes might still be less. But the preparation required for that class would be immense. And the reason I say that is because you have to be pre-researched for a class and then enter. So the way things work at Ashoka is, the faculty would give you a topic and they'll say, please research on this topic and come prepared for a class. Where would you do that research? That is the reason it's a residential campus because library access, lab access, peers access, faculty access is 24 by 7. So you have to research on that and be prepared. Now imagine this class of 30, 30 different students have 30 different point of views of research. Now coming to class, and a faculty guiding such conversations, that's how liberal education primarily operates, right? So if you're really gonna ask me, uh, don't do that math of how many number of classes and thing like that. Any liberal education university, if they're really truly liberal education, it would be academically really rigorous. Yeah, right? and I love the twist. Thank you for bringing it up because, you know, People think they mistake the word liberal being that, hey, you know, fine, we'll allow you to color your hair and pierce your body whenever you want to. But then that's something different. But the amount of rigor the student goes through, it is absolutely, uh, you know, somebody who has to be at the front foot. If you're the kind to finish your assignments or submit your assignments night before, please do not apply. Because it's... So it is a lot of preparation, like, uh, you know, Harpreet said, and, you know, uh, it, it's it's a tough course. And and that is the reason. Testing at the same time, because it's your research. Absolutely. And that is the reason everybody, including the industry and the government, is saying that all universities, including DU, IIT, IIMs, would have to turn liberal. This is the only yes. future. So the place you guys are stuck is, right now you have both setups of industry, uh, educations there, traditional and liberal. You have to choose between one which is going to die off and the other one which everybody is saying is the future. That's your challenge. If you have questions on that, I think that will be more interesting. Okay, okay. okay. Those twists are breath. I'm re really loving the, your take on all the questions. <laughs> Uh, Kanti, uh, there is a question specific about elaboration, uh, elaborate on recognition of BTEC degrees uh, from Tarit Kumar Singh. Uh, so, Plaksha University is recognized by UGC. We are on the UGC website. We've been listed as a Punjab state uh, private university. Uh, we are lo located in Mohali, that's why, which is a part of the Chandigarh Tri City area. Uh, now, we have our first batch in. Uh, the UGC generally does the last inspection after one year, one to one and a half years of the program having started. Uh, we are expecting to get that done uh, in the near future. Once that is over, uh, all our degrees, in fact, all our degrees are already uh, recognized. It's just that they do that one last inspection. That is the only thing that's pending. So, which means if they are UGC recognized, it means that you, your student, our students can go on to do government jobs. They can take up uh, masters at government colleges, which is the toughest thing to do if you don't come from a recognized university. And we are recognized all over the world. Okay, okay. Uh, there is a question. Somebody is commenting that the need for more for 
science students rather than for commerce and arts majors. Uh, I, I think the kind of courses which all the universities have presented has enough options for people who are in commerce or in humanities. So uh, in case we have a specific question, uh, it's, it has come from Ritu Manyar. Please, please put that and I'm sure the panelists will be able to answer which is... So, you know, uh, I think all of the courses that are offered are pretty much subject agnostic. You may yeah. be science, commerce or a humanities when you come to the university, you can pretty much take everything other than just few uh, uh, subjects which require that you must have mathematics in your uh, uh, 11th and 12th, uh, which could be computer science, data science and economics, finance, uh, you know, the few subjects that way, uh, sorry, economics, where you must have uh, studied maths in your 11th and 12th, any level of math. Uh, but other than that, uh, anybody coming from any background can study anything. And so, Maya, if I could uh, add to that, uh, so I'm thinking like a parent now who's asking what course my child should do, which will earn him better, right? So uh, if you have done any research on what the 21st century uh, education models should be, uh, run away from anything which is memory dependent, run away from anything which is repetitive in nature. I'm going to go out and say, including law, medicine, engineering, this is a challenge unless and until it's tied up to a liberal setup. Uh, please be very aware of this. Anything which is, I could challenge this in front of anybody. Uh, go to a doctor. What does a doctor really ask you, right? Uh, what's your symptoms? And based on his memory bank on understanding of what different diseases are, he then guides you towards a certain diagnosis. If he does not understand it well, he then asks you to get a test done. And based on that tells you what further to be done. Please understand it's completely memory based. Why is it going to be a challenge? Because now my phone could memorize more than what my brain could ever do in my lifespan. So that capacity of memory, which was a great tool earlier, is not a skill set for the future anymore. So please be understanding of this fact and prepare your children accordingly. So I'm thinking like a parent right now and answering any parent who's thinking where should my child do what right so combinations even coding for that matter right you would not have coders in the future in that sense of it because if you have seen ads by companies who give you that sixth and eighth class may they could help your child code they're not coding anymore they're really a student who's joining puzzles or different codes already present right that is not coding so even computer coding would become a challenge. So computer sciences has evolved much more beyond that. So, you know, please, again, I'm saying if you're sticking to any traditional setups, unless and until it has a liberal angle to it, run away from it, being very honest. There is a question. For there's a question for Amit. Amit, yeah. there's a question for you. Yeah, yeah. mathematics yeah. is compulsory for three campuses. Uh, that is for Mumbai, Navi Mumbai and Bangalore. Apart from this, all other campuses, maths is not compulsory, even if you, you know, uh, submit your SAT score and all that. So for commerce and economics, maths is compulsory for Mumbai, Nai Mumbai and Bangalore campus. For rest of the other campuses, maths is not compulsory. It is a question of SAT score validity. SAT is valid for five years. So if you, if you take a SAT, it's valid for five years. So that's the validity of SAT. Uh, so I, I, it's now 7.26. Uh, we would like to finish this at 7.30. Uh, so I, I would uh, request all the panelists to again leave their contact details in case there is a question which has been missed out and uh, which students want to reach out to you directly. Uh, so that is a request from my side, if you can put it on the chat boxes. And yeah, okay, there's one more question. Uh, uh, do I have to appear for NPAT if I have a SAT score? Uh, Amit, you want to take yeah, that? Yeah, NPAT, uh, yeah, NPAT uh, exams, only there are 5 to 10 percent of admission which is generally accepted through SAT. Uh, the rest of the 90 percent of the admission is done through NPAT itself only. So it depends that if you have a score of near about 1200 and <clears throat> for the SAT, then it will be accepted and that will only consider to 5 to 10 percent and other 90 percent it will be considered for NPAT itself only. Okay. okay. Uh, there's a question which I thought one of you may want to take it. With so many combinations available, it's very confusing to choose majors and minors. How do we choose while filling the form? 
uh, request uh, any one of you to kind of uh, take it. Maybe Milu, you can. Is it a parent or a student? If we can know from the chat, it will be interesting to answer then. Yeah, it looks to be a student. Uh, how do we choose? It's this Pooja Junjunwala. See, it's a parent. It's a parent. Oh, okay. will, the, I knew okay. it. I knew it. And you know, so oh. nice to hear get this question from you, Pooja. You know, we're all uh, you know uh, in in this uh, set. In fact, if a student asks us, like you know, there's so many options, and I'm confused or this thing, it's a it's a good thing, which means you're actually, you know, trying to figure out. And instead of uh, you know, I'll just give you a question. Uh, uh, you know, we offer 353 major minor combinations. And if I told you to reject 352 and pick one, do you know what kind of difficult choice would that be? So the best way is to come explore. During that time, you one uh, basically understand so many disciplines, which you may not, a subject that you may not have studied in school. So how do you really make a choice? I don't know what archaeology is, or I don't know what public policy is. Unless I, you know, come and explore that, I'll not be able to make a choice just by listening or just researching on internet or talking to a couple of people. So once you're in the first year, it is essentially to just explore all of these options, and then you, and you have to talk to students by the time they're somewhere, you know, in the last term of the first year. They really know what they have to do. Some of them know that they'll just keep a, a, a select a major and keep an open minor because they love exploring about so many subjects. So there are enormous number of opportunity. Yes, one way of looking at it is it's confusing, but the other way is uh, that because you go through the entire thing, you really find your uh, calling and, and it's too early to actually find your calling. You should be studying you know, different things. So that's my take and uh, please, uh, uh, I would request anyone else to speak ahead. Uh, as far as Kriya is concerned, uh, you don't need to declare your major minor when you're filling up your application. So uh, your question was then how to choose. So first year when students are studying all the core courses and the skill courses at Kriya, uh, every professor has six to eight students, you know, and, and he works as a mentor for them. And CSO office is also working with the students. So, you know, with the support of professors and uh, the CSO office, they are able to explore by the end of the first year that what would they like to uh, pursue. Suppose if they are still not able to, you know, then there is always uh, the method of deletion. So you, you just start deleting what you don't want to do. Plus they have a shopping period. So they are allowed to attend, you know, three, four uh, classes, you know, in that entire week, they can attend as many classes as they want. Suppose they are confused between uh, you know, psychology and, and say computer science, they can go for both the classes and uh, after attending two, three classes, they can choose what they would like to do. And, and I would like to uh, say one thing towards the end that, you know, uh, now uh, careers are not related to specific disciplines, you know, or, or it, it's the other way around also. It's not that a specific discipline will lead to uh, a, a specific career in that domain only, domain only. You know, history students are not all history students are going to become historians. You know, history students can work with the tech companies also because it is the skill set which is more important, which you learn, which you which you acquire uh, when you are studying these disciplines, right? So I I, I hope that helps you in in deciding. Uh, I think uh, we've just come to. Uh, the end of the webinar. I think uh, it's it's been a wonderful uh, interaction between the students and all of you. Uh, thank you so much for taking your time, and I'm sure the students will have much more to ask you. And I see all of you, all the all of you have left your uh, contact details. Uh, so uh, good evening to all of you, and thanks again for joining. Uh, We've left all our phone numbers and, and email IDs. So in case you have any particular question to any one of us, please feel free. Yeah, is this recording to be shared? Yes, it will be shared, Anish. It will be shared with all who have attended. Thank you. Thank you all. And uh, good evening again to all of you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Samuel, for giving us the opportunity. Thank you so much and good evening. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Stay thank safe. Bye-bye. Yeah, thank you all. Bye.